Hello folks, welcome. This is session 12 and we're going to talk about today um, about Marco Chen Monte Carlo, okay? MCMC. So these uh, change of methods, uh, they help us to solve some of the problems that we had with the uh, Monte Carlo sampling that was most of it uh, sampling in high dimensions, okay? Uh, one of the most useful methods here is uh, Gibbs sampling. So Gibbs sampling is uh, a simple um, idea that instead of trying to sample in the whole joint space that is really high because or really big because it's a high dimensional space, you want to sample on the full conditional. Okay, the full conditional is nothing else but the marginal. Um, uh, sorry, the conditional of one of those uh, dimensions given the rest, okay? So you want to take for each dimension xi condition on the on all the other variables, okay? And then you sample that one. And then the, the nice part of this is that you get uh, much, much smaller ways of, of computing these uh, these, the, these samples. Now you can just simply chain them to, to compute the samples on your model. So that's it, <laughs> like the idea is really, really simple. Now, uh, if you want, we can go through some uh, examples here. So for instance, consider this icing model in which the posterior of one of them is uh, given the rest, uh, is this um, multiplication of all the nodes within the neighborhood of T, and then you have some potential, okay? Some potential uh, given XS and XT. And this potential or uh, normally is just exponential of this J um, in the multiplication of XS and XT. And this J is just the coupling strength, like how, how uh, st strong are these two, two uh, nodes related, okay? Now, if you just plug these into your standard uh, icing model, what you will end up with is that given some uh, class in xt, for instance, xt equal to one, and then you condition with respect of everything else, then what you have is the probability given the, the, the coupling, right, in the neighborhood over the probability the, of the, the rest, right? Like being either positive or being uh, negative within that, that neighborhood. So if you solve this, uh, then you, you just end up with these exponentials uh, with respect of eta here. And it, it, it's, uh, it's just a sigmoid, right? So now the thing here is um, that this eta t that defines the, the sigmoid that we will be using it depends on on the summation of the values in the neighborhood, right? Now, the thing is that these values within the neighborhood, it is something like adding those nodes that agree and those nodes that disagree with me. So when the neighborhood is balanced, the distribution is uniform. And um, when it is not, then I have some, some more uh, strange distribution in here. So, you can also uh, try to compute these, for instance, using this other uh, icing model when I have some local evidence, so I can change my way of, of computing this potential so in here. So I can assume some normal distribution, for instance. And then you end up with these uh, other some local evidence to avoid this uniform distribution when you don't have uh, any information. So this is some really nice way of doing sampling because now you can just simply go through your life and since this is an icing model you can just go from the parents to the children right and just move through the graph but that is one one particular way of doing it so drawbacks of this this method in, in the Gibbs sampling is having not a, a nice way of computing that conditional so in case you don't have any conjugate priors or something like that. But eh, still with that, you, you, you can work it out, okay? For instance, uh, if you want to work with some mixture of Gaussians, you can assume some semi-conjugate uh, prior over here and still get out of this uh, tight spot. And you just need to compute the posterior 
of each of these with respect of everything else, right? So now you can just compute the ci equal to k, excuse me, with respect of all the other variables. And then you know that this is proportional to this uh, weighted normal. And the same for the, for the classes, right? The class is given the, the z, and then this is approximately a Dirichlet, so you know what the distribution here is. And the same happens for the uh, probabilities of the mu's given the sigmas and the probabilities of the sigmas given the, the rest of the things. Now, this is really nice because you can change these things, right? You can um, see what you need to compute each of those. So you can compute the, given some values, you can compute the CI, right? And then you can plug the CI to compute the class. Once you have the class and the CI, you can come back and compute the, the, the values for the uh, mu k and the sigma k, right? Basically, you just need some prior in here. As you see, you need this uh, uh, v0 and, uh, and m0, right? That are the priors of your, of your data point. So you will also need some, some prior here to, to make this work. But yeah, that is a, a much, much simpler way in which you just cascade this um, uh, way of, of producing, producing uh, samples. And another uh, interesting way of, of using this give sampler is, for instance, when you have some uh, latent variable that, it, that depends uh, and is dependent with respect of your, or, or your parameters, such that when you have that, that observed variable, you reduce the variance then you can use this particular collapse uh, give sampler. For instance, when you have a mixture of Gaussians, then you can take advantage of that because uh, your whole distribution in here ends up as a condition with respect of all the other variables that do not correspond to that cluster, right? And if you do that, then you can select, for instance, some, some set of parameters and define these uh, latent variables with respect of everything else. And then you just end up with this particular um, Dirichlet here with the count. And the final solution is simply counting the, the values. And for Xi, once you have this uh, Ci over here, when, once you do the, the conditional, you just... Uh, get the, the conditional given the rest of the of the variables in here that it is nothing else but the xi and removing one value from your data set right you just remove the ones that you don't care and then you can use a, a conjugate pair in here and solve for that so in here like the toughest part is doing the algebra and selecting those conjugate priors that work for your case and then seeing if these particular constraints hold up. But the whole idea is really, really simple. Again, to solve uh, or to sample in high dimensions, what I'm going to do is just sample feature-wise or dimension-wise and then do the full condition on there. Basically, I'm just going to take one of them condition on the rest. And what I'm going to do is sample and just cascading those samples so I'm going to sample for one and solve uh, and get one value and push it into the second one sample using the previous one and so on and so forth. And that uh, solves the, the whole deal of using uh, Monte Carlo for, for high dimensions. Okay. Now, the problem is computing this posterior, right? But in theory, you should be able to, to do it.